Welcome to the Astoria Film Festival Spotlight Interviews. Today we're speaking with Marlon Perrier, actor, writer, and filmmaker, whose film The Talk won honorable mention in our 2018 festival. Where are you coming from? I was just walking back to my friend's place. Your friend's place? Where are you going? Put your hands out of your pockets. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> are you ready for bed? Are you ready? He's my baby. The fear of my son. My only son. What are you doing in this neighborhood? Class project, sir. Class project? Class project, sir. I don't think so. In this neighborhood, you're not supposed to be here. You think you're going to walk out of here? I'm just trying to get to my family, don't, sir. Shut your mouth. Please what? don't shoot, sir. I'm just trying to get home. Really just trying to get home, sir. Home? You're not going home tonight. And for some reason, I just got this idea. Um, this image came into my mind of uh, two police officers uh, aiming their guns at a 10-year-old and his hands in the air. Yes. It just came out of nowhere. The image um, came into my head, and, and that kind of started the whole, you know, idea of the talk. Um, you know, I couldn't shake that image, so I started working on it, and I, I started, um, of, of course, me being African American and, and being um, aware of what's going on. I I know I already know about Tamir Rice. I already know about Trayvon Martin. So, you know, I, I just dug deeper into, um, you know, their background and, and, and everything that really happened with the police. Um, and that all helped me in writing this. When you have a conversation with your kid about the police who, you know, they know that they're supposed to protect us, but now you're having a conversation like, no, sometimes the police are the bad guys too. See, that's different than just stay away from strangers, don't take candy from strangers, you know, never get into a stranger's car or a stranger's van. That's like, okay, so how do I know, how do I know which, who to trust as far as police and who not to trust? How do I know which is, you know? So, so she knows having those conversations changes his whole, you know, dynamic and way of thinking. And she, she wants to keep him as uh, innocent um, as possible, which I understand. But uh, so, so basically the talk is, is about um, the debate that we're having about whether we should talk to our nine-year-old about the police. It's one of those things where if you're African-American in this country, you can't afford not to have those conversations because, and, and, and one of the things my character says um, to his wife um, is he just wants his son to make it home alive. Right. Yes, right. I understand, right. you know, he's, it's going to change him, but I'd rather him be changed and alive than not make it home at all. Did you, were you given the talk? And if so, at what age? Uh, so I was given the talk, um, maybe, maybe it started around nine-ish, but it wasn't them sitting me down to have one conversation to, 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 to tell me about it. It was, they mentioned it off, they mentioned it all the time, you know, uh, not every day, but they would always say, you know, talk about the cops and be careful with the cops. And sometimes they're bad. So, so it was, it was like continuous, like um, continuously drilled into my head. The else we have to, we have to do things differently than everybody else because we know what the consequences are. So it's not like even if she, it's not like even if we waited to talk to him till he was twelve or thirteen, it's not like he's not gonna. Already. you know learn these things yeah. just being around you know learn about racism people the way people react to him just being around people what was your first realization of that in your life you know racist stuff that goes on on a daily basis from being in, in a store with my mom and, and people you know security following us around the store the, you know being in a store with my dad and, and um you know maybe there's a white person in front of me and, and, and so you see the way the person at the cashier is is a white person and then when my father comes up it's 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 negativity and attitude and no pleasantries. Being an African American, you can just get used to, to all of it and you just kinda of put it in a in a place somewhere in your in your heart and in your head. And it's like okay, that's another one of those. That's fine. You know you because if we if we right. get as angry and furious 
with all these things that happen on a daily basis, we would lose our minds. We can't do that. We can't stay in a constant state of rage because honestly, if we're walking around with rage, trust me, something's going to happen to us. So you, yeah. you kind of walk around and be pleasant and, and, mm -hmm. and nod and smile and, and, and try not to try not to be, um, aggressive looking, you know, you know, I've had situations where, um, I've had situations where people, you know, whether it, I, I walk into a room or, or, uh, I walk into a store, um, and people just kind of look at me and get, um, kind of fearful, you know, I work out, I'm athletic, um, and people just kind of, you know, get, they, they kind of like, yeah, yeah. That's a big dude. And then Some once I start to work out, it's because they're racist. <laughs> like, I just want to put that out there. <laughs> what I'm is, what I'm, I, like, I hear I, you. I hear you. It happens more so than not. So you just kind of, you just kind of like have to, you, you, you just have to keep going. Yes. You always keep going and not let it completely make you crazy and change who you are as a person. Any thoughts about Black Lives Matter? Not with Black Lives Matter, it's because. I think people are finally waking up because they had nothing to do. <laughs> so they can. So yeah. so so now yeah. then, you know, when 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 you see somebody getting killed, lynched on, on tape, on video right in front of you, and 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 by the police, and he has his hands in his pocket, and you can see you can see that he not only is enjoying it, but when everybody's pleading for him to let um, George Floyd up, and see him kind of dig a little deeper, push a little further on the neck. You know, you can't watch that. And if, if, if you're a human being, if you have em any empathy towards anybody, you can't watch it and not feel affected by it. And of course, you know, we, you and I had this conversation. I think um, one of the keys to change, sp specifically with the police department, is going to be uh, accountability. It's going to be if, if a police officer kills someone and it's unjust, they go to jail. If every police officer that killed somebody that was unjust went to jail, people would think twice about tell us a little about your work i've been lucky i, I you know I've, I've been blessed uh um but i've been on blue bloods law and order which of course is a staple you know everybody wants yeah. to have more if you live in new york you gotta be on law and order at least once <laughs> so and i got to work with marishka which is great um gotham um godfather of harlem uh uh, I've been on Seven Seconds as well, which is which was a, an amazing piece of work speaking about racism and cops. Oh. So, um, my biggest role to date um, would have to be a, a film I do called Going in Style, um, starring uh, Morgan Freeman, Michael Caine, uh, Alan Arkin, um, Kenan uh, Thompson from SNL. Uh, I played Matt Dillon's partner, where oh, wow. three old guys decide that they want to go out in style, so they rob a bank. Um, and me and Matt Dillon come in after, you know, midway through the movie and start investigating it, it was a really really uh cute movie and it was a great experience i got to work with some people i've been you know i mean i've, I've always wanted to work with morgan freeman so i got to actually share a, you know share a, the screen with morgan freeman and it was really really cool i, I met christopher lloyd christopher lloyd uh, i shared a scene with him and he was lovely wow. so it was a it was a uh, um great great experience it was directed by zach braff from scrubs and and he's a great he's a great director he's a great director he, he has some great um, so we, we we would we would do the script and then um, every once in a while he's like you know just add this let's see what happens and so he likes to play and you know to see if he can make things a little funnier so it, it was a great experience. I anything you want to add before we wrap up? Well, first and foremost, I want to say thank you. Um, thank you. Um, and I just want to say to anybody who's watching just keep doing what you got to do keep dreaming and i think you know the entertainment business has always been a lot more um open and progressive than the world um yes. but there still have been some some serious issues that we've had in it in, oh, in the yes. entertainment business which is how you get to the whole oscar so white um situation whereas you know with all the you know amazing African American performances, you you know through year through you know year in and year out, you know everyone you know you might get one person nominated, and again those are awards. The awards are extra, but at the same time, when I was ten and eleven, 
and I want to be an actor. I always want, I always said I, I want to win an Oscar, you know, and I'm a firm believer in creating your own projects, creating your own, you know, you, have, you look at somebody like Issa Rae who, who, who created Awkward Black Girl and now she has Insecure, which is literally just Awkward Black Girl with a lot of money into it, you know, on HBO, you know, and it's a great show. Um, but I, I, I would love to see more people start doing that just taking matters into your own hands, you know, just create your own opportunities. You now, people like Tyler Perry, people like Ava DuVernay, you know, um, we're starting to see some, some real uh, change. Uh, they have their own production company. And so she's, she's producing her own. A lot more African-Americans are now um, going into production to start um, producing their things that speak to their hearts. So I've been, I've been really working on my writing um, during this whole quarantine. So if you see, uh, if you see any, um, you know, if you see deadline report that, you know, Netflix bought one of my, <laughs> one of my projects, don't be surprised. I, I would not at all be surprised.